the volunteers vary from people already on the ground, such as radio amateurs who have their own equipment and are uh, quite often the first on the scene at a natural disaster, all the way up to more organized uh, um, groups such as the uh, Red Cross, uh, Telecommunications Sans Frontiers, uh, and then at the end of that you also have your commercial interests who are able to come in and support the volunteers. So it's quite a, a wide range of individuals. Well, I, I think uh, they will be quite often uh, some of the first uh, people on the ground. Um, amateur radio operators are, are quite often uh, at the scene already uh, of, a com of a communications uh, disaster, an actual disaster, and are able to supply the critical communications for the first few hours. You then have volunteers who, uh, in organized groups, uh, either with the Red Cross or other societies who come in and, uh, and sustain that, uh, that uh, communications model. And then at the end, uh, you have uh, when commercial facilities are available that are, are able to establish themselves, those volunteers will operate the uh, commercial facilities to provide communications as required. You have a core group of individuals who uh, can supply this, this information and supply communications right away. And these, these are people who are trained, they know what to do to provide uh, ICT and communications infrastructure. Uh, and they can be often critical in, in providing communications support uh, to first responders, to medical uh, facilities, to governments. The goal nine of the sustainable development has to deal with innovation and infrastructure. And uh, he, the goals of the SSDM are to make that infrastructure robust. So in the event that communications uh, are affected by a natural disaster, that you have a core group of individuals uh, and, and information and technology that can step right in and, uh, and support uh, communications uh, going forward. So it's a vital part of the UN uh, development goals.